Um, let's go through some of the basic tools I'm going to use. Um, good comfortable knife. Um, I always make sure when I'm cutting styrene that I start with a nice fresh blade. I tend to avoid this kind of straight edge here just because when I'm cutting my fingers are exposed so I'll mostly go for, for this kind here where I little groove and my fingers are, are shielded. I always wear cut proof gloves just in case you do slip then you're not going to have any accidents. Once the parts have been cut you need to tidy up the edges so I'll just use a standard metal file and also use a little bit of sandpaper and if we've got straight edges that I need to sand I'll put it on a block of wood. So these parts have already been pre-scored and we're just going to cut through with the knife for the one mil mill styrene. So we get our straight edge, I'm going to butt it up to where we want to cut. Like so. And then with the knife, very lightly run the blade along the straight edge. So that's very lightly. And then your second run, you can press a bit harder like so. Okay, and you'll have cut a groove in there and you can see it's already gone through. Okay, now we're going to go through the other side. Again, placing the ruler and then running the blade lightly to start with and then the second pass is harder. Okay. And then we do this for each and every side. Like so. Each time making sure that the ruler is butted up to the edge. And again, take your blade, a light score, and then the second pass slightly harder. Again, you can see no, it's just popping out now. Okay. And then the bottom edge, do exactly the same. Along the straight edge, a light score. And then a slightly harder second pass. You don't need to press hard at all. And then the final side. And then your part just literally pops out. Now, this piece here is a curved piece. So it's a little more tricky, so we'll do this freehand. So from there, we should end up with those four pieces. This part is scrap. Okay. onto this piece you see it's two pieces here the ones we want to keep and as a rectangle very easy to cut And again, these parts should just pop out. Like so. This part is the scrap. 
We want to keep this part here. And then the last piece for this coin, coin return. So we're going to keep just this part here, the outer and this inner is going to be scrap. So again, nice straight edges, so easy to cut. As you can see that just as I moved it this piece already popped out and this is scrap so we'll get rid and then we're left with uh, this piece here and now we have all our pieces for our first corner return. As you can see where you've cut it's kind of left some sort of horrible edges so these can be easily gotten rid of um, with the file so, as you can see there, just run the file along. We're already, most of it is gone. It's kind of left this sort of beveled edge. Here, so I'll get my sandpaper. And still a little bit left, so I'll go over with the file. When it comes to the smaller pieces, where it's got the curve, I tend to take the sandpaper just in my fingers and then my fingers can follow the curve. Whereas if you to use the, the block, then you could sort of remove some of the curve when you're sanding. And when it comes to these, what look like triangles, but so it's got the straight edge here and it goes off at an angle here so when you're sanding just be mindful of that okay. and that's the first one cut out okay so these two i've already cut earlier plus the ones i've just cut now let's get them packed off Chris, get these made. Thank you very much, Jamie. Let's see what we've got here. So, uh, coin returns. Uh, just before we get stuck into the assembly of these, um, I'll just go through uh, some general kind of information, tools, tips, uh, but of course, more importantly, health and safety. So, uh, when you're putting these together, um, it's always best to be in a well ventilated area. The uh, assembly outside if you can open space if you can't if you've got a garage or a workshop that you can use just try to make sure that you've got all of your windows and your doorways open it just allows that uh, kind of airflow to take away any of those horrible vapors you can invest in one of these so this is just a simple cloth uh, mask it'll really aid uh, you when you're when you kind of close you know trying to keep an eye on where you're gluing stuff and you're really close to the uh, the actual parts when you're assembling them and applying the glue. You could also purchase one of these this is a bit more heavy duty you have two filters on the side uh, these are specifically designed for uh, as a gas filter but uh, but this really does uh, take away a lot of the uh, a lot of the fumes that you get from the adhesives. Glasses eye protection so these are really an essential as well because you don't want to end up kind of flicking uh, adhesive into your eye by accident so glues adhesives there's lots of different types out there uh, you can use a, a two-part epoxy such as this they're really good a two-part epoxy is going to hold it's going to be rock solid uh, 
but they are generally a bit more expensive for the quantity that you get. You could also use a super glue such as this and then purchase a, a, a bottle with like a dropper on the end of it um, so that it's a bit more you've got a bit more control when you're applying uh, adhesive to the surface of your parts. One of the other things you could use is an EMA plastic weld or an acrylic uh, adhesive uh, specially designed for plastics. Uh, they're really really good. Um, this is actually uh, a bottle of uh, what's called dichloromethane. Um, it's actually one of the key ingredients of the EMA Plasti Weld, but you can get a larger quantity um, of it for a slightly cheaper price. It's fantastic stuff, but it's highly toxic, so definitely recommended uh, for use when you're outside. I always use a small jam jar um, and a paintbrush, so I can decant it into that, and I just dip a bit in, and then literally just get my parts, and I do a quick kind of cross stroke of the um, adhesive on the one face that I want to glue and then take the other piece, do the same on the other side that I want to glue so I've got the two faces with a bit of adhesive on, put them together and I let that kind of capillary reaction do its thing and then it creates a really strong bond. Now you can move parts a little bit for a couple of minutes um, but then once it sets it's pretty solid so um, you've just got to be a bit mindful about timing and, and how much you're using as well. And be also very careful because these are only one mil thick. If you use too much you're going to warp the part and then you're going to have to cut out another part or you're going to uh, you know, just source another piece. Um, so it can be uh, a bit troublesome. One other suggestion for uh, poly cement. Uh, a lot of people who who perhaps done airfix kits and the, uh, it's really good. It gives you a good setting sort of time, you usually have around five minutes to kind of move your p uh, pieces into position so I'd also recommend that perhaps uh, and we'll, uh, we'll get into the assembly and see what else uh, we can do. Thank you. Okay guys, so as you can see here um, I've got my bits that uh, Jamie kindly cut out. I have here um, just a small jar as I mentioned earlier, a uh, jam jar with my uh, dichloromethane, um, that's my kind of chosen uh, adhesive for the for the moment. Uh, I'm using a paintbrush uh, that you'll see here. Uh, that's going to be my applicator, and as I say, here are the parts. So uh, we'll start by just putting just a small piece on. Say small piece. Uh, there we go. Just applying a small thin layer to one side here. Don't forget, um, use your uh, use your masks if you've got them. Um, if you're going to be inside, it's really uh, a necessity. Um, and as you can see here, I'm just kind of putting just a thin layer of adhesive over both faces of the items uh, that I'm going to glue together. And I'm just going to glue that down there like so. So let's just get that. I've pre-marked out uh, which I'm going to, uh, which way round here by marking just a, a T at this this end just here. So I know which is the top and which is the bottom. Don't forget you also, <coughs> I'm probably going to uh, benefit just from giving um, the parts a once over just so you know, you know, <clears throat> what parts you've got. I'll just put another small layer in there just at the back and all that's going to do is it's just going to help that kind of like say the capillary reaction. You can move it a bit kind of back and forth to help and that should help it um, stay in, uh, in place. So I'll just move that to there. As you can see, I'm wearing some gloves. These are actually like a kind of like a latex glove. Um, I don't expect that they'll do much good if I were to spill a whole jar of this on the gloves, but they're there just to stop any kind of little spatters from uh, getting onto my skin. So there we go. There's the first piece done. See that? It's held up under its own weight. It's not too bad. 
So we'll make a start now with the next piece. And the two sides are on, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to put the back piece on now. So again, just put a thin bead down each side, don't worry if you accidentally uh, knock these out of position there will be a little bit of flex as you can see. It's always good to note there is a shiny side usually and a slightly duller side on these. Uh, try and use the slightly duller side um, because you'll find the adhesive does a better job on it. Okay, so there we go. So I'm just putting on a, a little bit more of an extra layer, just to work it in there. I'll place that in position. position. I'm going to bend that ever so slightly just so you start to get that curvature. As I say that will go with the curvature of the, uh, the skins. It is ever so slight. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to put the final piece in final two pieces. So again, take our adhesive, okay so I'm just going to put that there and again I'm just going to move that to the curvature. There we go. I'm just going to hold it there now just until it's dried. As you can see, I've glued on the top to this piece here. So this is now complete. So on to the remaining coin returns. So, but there we go, so our left, our right, and our front as well, which is slightly longer than the others, so try not to get them mixed up. Thank you.